So I can tell you from my personal experience, one of the best educated lessons I got was when I got to meet Trump. So I interviewed Trump four different times as a journalist, spent like two and a half hours with him in the Oval Office, not alone, but like me and one person and like the press secretary. And that was it. So I actually got to observe him. And as a guy who reads these types of books, right? And, you know, you think of Trump, obviously, most people, what they see on television, mm -hmm. you know, in articles and more. But being able to observe it like one on one, I was closer to him than, you know, than I am right now from you. That was one of the most educational experiences I got because it's like you just said, the look, the, the leaning forward, the way he talks, his, the way he is a master at taking the question and answering exactly which party wants. And then if you try and follow up, he's like, excuse me, Ex you know, like yeah. he, he, he knows. <laughs> and then whenever you're talking, it's not that he's annoyed about getting interrupted. If he realizes he's been mirandering and then you interrupt him, all good. But if he's striving home a point, which he has to make sure appears in your transcript mm -hmm. or whatever, it's, it's like, it really was fascinating for me to look at. And what was also crazy with Trump is I realized how much he was living in the moment. So like when I went to the Oval, you know, I've read all these biographies and like I walk in, I'm like, holy shit. <laughs> You're like, I'm in the Oval Office. Were well, you like, interviewing him in the Oval Office? In the Oval, every time was in the Oval Office. You scared shitless? Sorry. To well, I wasn't scared. I was just, look, it's the Oval Office, right? I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm this nerd. He was like this kid. I, when I'm so, I will admit this here. Like I printed out on my dad's label maker when I was like seven and I wrote like the Oval Office on my bedroom. So I was like, you know, a huge nerd, yeah. like obviously egomaniacal even from seven. <laughs> but so like for this, I mean, it was huge, right? I'm like this 25 year old kid. And like, I walk in there and like I see the couch, right? And yeah. I'm like, oh man, like that's a Kissinger. Like, you know, and I'm like, that's where like Kissinger and Nixon got on their knees. And you see over by the door and you're like, are the scuff marks still there from when Eisenhower used to play golf? You know, this is all running through my mind. Yeah. With Trump, none of it was there. Yeah. None of it, right? So like- it's all so in the even, moment. Even the desk, like, I put my phone on the desk to record. Yeah. And I'm like, this is the fucking resolute <laughs> desk. I'm like, I shouldn't put my phone on this thing, right? Yeah. And, and I'm like, HMS resolute, you know, all yeah. that, you know, national. And even for him, he doesn't think about any of it. It was like- amazing to me like he had this portrait of andrew jackson right next to his to the uh i think from on the fireplace like right here on the right and the most revealing question was when i was like mr president what are people going to remember you for in a hundred years and he was like he, he had he was like i don't know like veterans choice he, he like has a list in front of him yeah. of like his accomplishments which is staff. Question, by the way yeah well I, I mean that's what i wanted to know yeah. and he's like veterans choice and i remember looking at him being like it's not going to be better. <laughs> you know, like, I'd be like, I'm like, I'm looking at you, Donald Trump, the harbinger of something new. Yeah. We still don't know what the hell it is. And so I realized with these guys and their charisma and more is that they don't think about themselves the way that we think about them. Mm -hmm. And that was actually important to understand because a lot of people are like, Trump is playing all this chess. I'm like, I assure you, he's not. Like, he's truly living. One time I was interviewing him and he had like a certificate that he had to sign or something on his desk. He's like, a, it was like child almost. Like he got distracted by, the, he's like, oh, what's this? You know, he's yeah. just like picking up and I was like, wow, like this, this is the guy. Like, this is what he is. Well, I wonder if there was a different person because you were recording uh, than so I, offline. I can apartment. tell you, yes. well, here's the thing though, because that's another part of it. Because that two hours, I would say like half of that was not on the record. Mm -hmm. So like whenever he's off the record, he changes completely right I, I i don't want to like go into too much of it or yeah. whatever but like he uh i mean he is so mindful of when that camera is on mm -hmm. and when the mic is hot in terms of the language that he uses what he's willing to admit what he's willing to talk about how he's willing to even appear in front of his staff um i think the most revealing thing trump ever did was there was this press conference like right after he lost the, the uh, right after the midterm elections mm -hmm. in 2018 and one of the journalists was like, Mr. President, thank you for doing this press conference. And he looks at him and he goes, it's called Earned Media. It's worth billions. <laughs> he, just, he just like had so much disdain for him because he's like, I'm not doing this for you. He's yeah. like, I'm doing this for me. So he's really aware of the narrative of the story. I mean, that yeah. the people have talked about that all comes from the tabloid media of the from New York and so on. He's a master of that. But I've also heard stories of just in private, he's a really... I don't want to overuse the word charismatic, but just like 
he is a really interesting, almost like um, friendly, like a good person. Like, it, yeah. it, like that's what I heard. Uh, I've heard actually surprising the same thing about yeah. Hillary Clinton. Uh, <laughs> and like <laughs> that, I can't tell you anything about. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But like the the way they present themselves is perhaps very different than they are as human beings one on one. That that's something. Uh, maybe that's just like a skill thing. Maybe. Maybe w the way they present themselves in public is actually their, their uh, uh, I mean, almost their real self. And they're just really good in private, one-on-one, -on -one, to go into this mode of just being really intimate in some kind of human way. I think that's part of it. Because I, I would notice that with Trump. You know, he's like, it's almost like a tour guide. He'd be, it was very like, it's, it's, it's very crazy, right? Because you're like, you're in the Oval. I mean, it's his office. And he's like, he's like, do you guys want anything? He's like, you want a Diet Coke? Because he drinks like all this Diet Coke. That's and awesome. He, you know? And then, That's great. Unapologetic. He's, yeah, he's just like, it. he's like, you guys want a Diet Coke? Right? And you're sitting there and you're like, the way he he's able to like, like the last time I interviewed him, he he wanted to do it outside. Um, because he like he's studied himself from all angles and he knows exactly how he looks on a camera and with which lighting. Mm -hmm. And so we were supposed to interview him on camera in the Oval Office, which is actually rare. Like you don't usually get that. And they ended up moving it outside at the last minute. And he came out and he's like, I picked this spot for you. He's like, great lighting. Yeah. I was like, I was like, you are your own like lighting yeah. director. Yeah. You're the president. Right? It's great. It's, it's so funny. But it's like you said, he's he's very charismatic and friendly. I mean, you wouldn't know. I mean, look, I, this is what I mean in terms of the dy dynamism of these people that gets lost. And I think even he knows that. Like, I don't think he would want that side of him that I, you know, that you see in those off the record moments and more in order to come out because he's very keen about how exactly he presents to the public. It's like, you know, even his presidential portrait, everybody usually smiles and he refused to smile. He was like, I want to look like Winston Churchill, you know, like even he knew that. Do you think he believes that he, um, what, what he kind of implies that he is one of, if not the greatest presidents in American history? Like people kind of laugh at this, but there's quite, I mean, there's quite a lot of people, first of all, that make the argument that he's the greatest president in history. Like I've heard this argument being made. Yeah. Uh, and I mean, I don't know what the, first of all, I don't care. Like you can't <laughs> make an argument that anyone is the greatest. That's just, that's just, uh, yeah. I, I come from a school of like being humble and modest and so on. It's like even Michael, you can't have that conversation. <laughs> okay. Uh, so I like that he's humble enough to say like uh, Abraham Lincoln and whatever. Like uh, no, no, no. he says, maybe Lincoln. Maybe remember that he maybe. says maybe Lincoln. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> do you think he actually believes that, or is that something he understands will uh, create news and also, perhaps more importantly, piss off a, a large number of people? Is is he almost like a musician, masterfully playing the emotions of the public, or does he? Or, or and does he believe when he looks in the mirror, I'm one of the greatest men in history? Combination of all three. Um, I do think he believes it. And for the reason why is I don't think he knows that much about U.S. history. I, I really mean that. Like, And that's what I meant whenever I was in there and I realized he was just living in the moment. I don't think he knew all that much about why. I mean, this is why he was elected in many ways, right? So I'm not, I'm not saying this is a Norbert, like a, I'm not making a judgment with, mm -hmm. on this. I'm just saying... I do think in his mind, he does think he was one of the best presidents in American history, largely because, and I encountered this with a lot of people who work for him, which is that they didn't really know all that much kind of about what came before and all that. And it's not necessarily to hold it against them because for in many ways, that's what they were elected to do um, or elected to be in many ways. It's an interesting question whether right. knowing history, being a student of history is a is productive or counterproductive. I tend to assume <laughs> I really respect people who are deeply like well-read in history, like presidents that are almost like nerd, history yeah. nerds. I, I admire that, uh, but maybe that gets in the way. <laughs> well, it's, well. <laughs> of governance, I don't know. It's not, it's not, you know, I'm just sort of uh, playing devil's advocate to my own beliefs, but it's possible that focusing on the moment and the issues and letting history, it's like first principles thinking, forget mm -hmm. the lessons of the past. 
and just focus on common sense reasoning through the problems of today? Yeah, it's really hard question. In terms of the modern era, I mean, Obama was a student of history. Yeah. Like he used to have presidential biographers and people over and I mean, famously, like Robert A. Caro, one of my favorite presidential biographers, he was invited to, you know, have dinner with Obama. And Obama would like pepper some of his every t It was interesting because he'd try and justify some of the things he didn't do by being like, well, if you look at what they had to do and what mm -hmm. I have to deal with, yes. mine's much harder. Yes. So in that way, I was a little pissed off because I'd be like, no, that actually like you're comparing apples to oranges yes. and all that.